माय गॉड दिस रोड इज सो ब्यूटीफुल मैन फील्ड विद बीचेस फील्ड विद बीचेस सो मेनी बीचेस ओह नाइस हे एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द डे 2 ऑफ माय ट्रिप टू रन इन राजस्थान After a quick breakfast we headed out to explore the Kungan coastline. After a fresh morning start in Goa. Oh the contrast of the streets last night the streets are all buzzing with tourists beach shopping and all that. Now after our next destination Valneshwar. Yesterday I had a terrible sleep. I was shit tired as like kind of like drunk like tired. After all the 600 plus kilometers of riding yesterday, so I thought I'll get a good sleep. I did. I fell asleep like in two seconds. But then I woke up in the middle of the night with mosquito bites all around me. The fan was in full speed yet, and it was itching and everything. Then I had to wake up, open my bags, take Odomos, apply Odomos all over me, then. take out the mosquito repellent good night and switched it on and then i slept and then it was hostel right so 5 5:30 and the people started waking up and all and the usual noise i didn't have the best sleep but feeling fresh today so i guess it's okay <laughs> and anyway it's not much of highway right today it's all dirt roads small roads and all that so i guess it should be fine hey sunrise Intrigued by the sight of locals lined up on the bridge, we decided to stop by and take a look. See that? See that? Ooh! Shit! Nah, Prans. First of all, I'm scared of heights. Second of all, I'm scared of deep water. I'm both in combination of me, sir. Sir. Beautiful mornings <laughs> in Goa. Maharashtra a while ago, and our first stop, I think, is Malwan. It is 40 kilometers, but here 40 kilometers takes like two hours <laughs> in these roads. Maximum speed, an average speed we can maintain is just 30, 40 kilometers per hour. But it's beautiful. The roads are beautiful. Morning weather is nice. When I enter Maharashtra, I have this homely feeling. <laughs> Cause uh, for context, I was raised in Nagpur till the age of five. And that even though I spent the next twenty years in Toronto, that five years of Nagpur life has always had a place in my heart. So whenever we went to Maharashtra, the people, the food, and especially the signboard, I can read Hindi. It feels nice. Google Search is taking us through routes. God knows exits or not. <laughs> All are bad roads, but we'll see. These are all passing through the villages, I think, coastal villages. <laughs> oh, nice! So nice, isn't it? These small roads it is going. Oh, this is so beautiful, man! This is so freaking beautiful. The routes between the coastal villages through the plains are simply amazing. There's an airport in the middle of nowhere. Sindhu Dar Airport. I think this might be an army airport or something. We started from Arambol in Goa, entered Maharashtra, and reached Sindhu Dar Airport on the way to our first stop of the day, Malwan. The first stop of the day. It's a lovely ride, lovely morning ride. 
beautiful, beautiful Indian roads of Maharashtra. Had lovely breaks from this small place. <laughs> and nice hospitality also. One plate poha, one plate idli. That to four idlis. One double omelette, one single omelette, and uh, two coffee. Guess how much it's cost? 165. A stomach full of breakfast for 165. In Bangalore, one omelette you can get for 150 rupees. Chalo, getting hot. Full of energy from the breakfast, we continue towards our next destination, Devgad. The sea. the view started getting better and better so good the record right yeah it was so oh my god super yeah <laughs> oh fuck i can believe people have not explored these places instead of go and there you know absolutely beautiful and breathtaking <laughs> I'm so sorry to say that the camera isn't doing any justice to what we saw in real life. <laughs> oh no, it's so good. It's so good. Beautiful, beautiful. We spent almost like half an hour here. <laughs> Video calls mom and friends. Took so many photos because this place is somewhat oh, looks magical. <laughs> Beautiful. See the beach. It is so clean. Hardly any plastics, and the water is just crystal clear. You can see so many fish also. Time to say goodbye. This beautiful view. Beautiful. The Kungun coastline kept amazing us with the view of its beautiful beaches in every turn. Oh, the crystal clear water. Coconut trees. So we reached Devgad. It's a small junction. Next stop is Ratnagiri. So another, I think, almost an 80, 70, 80 kilometers. Another one, one and a half to two hours ride. In the meantime, we'll have some chai, refresh, recharge, and then carry on. What about yes, yes? Chai again? Under the bed, okay? Okay, okay. Ah. The tea shop owner curiously asked us what we were doing here because apparently tourists from other states hardly take this route. Although this route had its fair share of hardships which I'll share later, the views that it offered were simply beyond words. Ratnagiri kahi jayenge? Ayyo. And thus we came to the first obstacle. The main route to Ratnagiri was closed. Luckily, we met some locals who guided us to an alternate route. Google Chachi, why didn't the update Chachi? The road is closed in six months Chachi. We turned inland and took an alternate route to Ratnagiri and lost a couple of hours before we could join the coastline again. getting her date also oh oh mangrove wow i like the view and to make matters worse i came down with a terrible migraine headache and those of you had migraine you know how terrible it is to ride in hot humid and sunny weather Nevertheless, we made it to the next destination for lunch. All right, had some good lunch from Ratnagiri. So hot, man. I'm having migraine headache. Wanting to throw up. Usually, when when I have migraine at home, I'll just sleep the entire day because you can't pretty much do anything else. Now I'm stuck. So there's no option left but to ride. And if I have to throw up, I have to throw up. <laughs> It's another 72 more kilometers to go. Another three hours journey with one ferry ride in between. After leaving Ratnagiri, we continued back to the coastline, and once again, the Konkan coastline continued to show off its beautiful beaches one after the other. What amazing view, right? 
quite spectacular. I wish I didn't have a headache so that I could just soak in this views and enjoy every moment. Now because I have this migraine headache, I'm like the only thing in my mind is like go to the hotel and then sleep. Go to the hotel and sleep. But if I didn't have a headache, man, oh man, I would have enjoyed every little moment of this. Okay, chalo, let's go. We didn't stop at any more beach to take photos. Instead, we rushed to make it in time for the last ferry ride to the other side. This road is so beautiful, man. Filled with beaches. Filled with beaches. So many beaches. Wonderful. Wish we could get on in one beach, but the issue is we still have 40 kilometers to go. That is like two hours of journey left. So we have to cover as much distance as possible before daylight goes away. And second thing is I'm having terrible headache. So to get to safety before it goes and nice. As the sun was setting on the coastline, we made our way through the coastal villages one by one to get to the Jaigarh ferry. Oh yes, where do we take the ferry? So we took tickets to the ferry. Ferry has come. It is 160 for two bikes. <laughs> Into the ferry. Holy shit, this is wobbling like crazy man. This was my first ferry ride with Nino, my Himalayan. So even though I had a terrible headache, I enjoyed every moment of it. Ferry ride. Done. Oh. 30, 13 more kilometers to go. Younger is, younger ride is initially scary. I mean, we loaded the bikes, the boat was waving too much and we made this migraine headache but we feel very very nauseous that's what I'll throw up. So once it started, I don't smoke. Sun is setting. Sunset. There's five more kilometers to Guhagar, that's where we are staying. Beautiful. Oh my god, look where Google Chechi is taking us. Oh man, this is hardcore off-road. Amazing. <laughs> we made it safe and sound to our final destination, Guhagar. But we had one more problem to solve. Figuring out a place to stay, man. In the map, this looked like a big town, so that's why we thought we'll uh, come here and stay for the night. But it looks like a very small town with only resorts and homestays, and uh, those cost like 2000 3000 per room per night. Found this small hotel, written AC, non AC, and all that stuff. We'll ask. Really need to find a place to settle in before it gets too late. A kilometer ahead, we found a decent lodge and spent the night. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. See you in the next video where we explore more of the Kongan coastline.